From its origins to things that are on it that you might have missed, join us as we explore amazing facts about the American flag. Number 9. It's gone through many iterations. When people think about the American flag, they either think of the first one that was made in 1777 to represent the 13 colonies, or the flag we have now that has 50 stars and 13 stripes. Each of these versions is an important part of American history without a doubt, but there have been other versions of the flag besides these two. For example, for about 23 years, the American flag had a very different look than the other two, mainly in that it had 15 stars and 15 stripes in order to honor the new states that had just been added to the fold via Vermont and Kentucky, which is the most stripes the American flag has ever had in its history. But by 1818, the United States was continuing to grow and they realized that it would be easier to add more stars to the flag to honor the states than the stripes that would need to get even thinner. Thus, they decreed that the flag would keep adding stars but would keep the stripes at 13 to honor the original colonies. Then, in 1958, a 17-year-old school student, Robert G. Heft of Lancaster, Ohio, won a contest to design the new and final design of the American flag. It features the 50 stars and 13 stripes that are now seen all over. So special was this contest that President Dwight D. Eisenhower was the one to pick it out. It may seem kind of odd that the flag has had so many versions over the years, but a great way to think about it that it isn't just a flag. It's a representation of a country, a country that has grown mighty big since the original 13 colonies. So to have that flag evolve with the nation truly represents the nation itself, and that is something to be mighty fond of. Oh, and in case you were curious, in total, there have been 27 different forms of the American flag since 1777. 8. A Native American helped get the flag finalized. I bet that's a story they didn't teach you in school, huh? There are many different legends about how the American flag got made, and we'll be talking about a certain leading lady soon enough. But in the year 1777, the Congress of the newly formed Nation of America was still unclear of what the flag should look like as they knew that such a flag needed to be a symbol of not just the nation, but their people. Because of that, they were throwing out all kinds of ideas, despite a war going on and their people really needing a symbol. Enter a man named Thomas Green. While that name might not sound irregular, it was one that belonged to a Native American, who, if you recall, weren't exactly the most popular among the colonists for reasons I'll have to discuss on another list. But needless to say, Green was no fool. He knew that going through certain parts of the new country would be dangerous if he couldn't prove that he was an ally to the nation. So he wrote a letter to Congress and besieged them to finalize a flag design so he could carry it on his way to Philadelphia and thus not be harmed. To help persuade the Congress to do so, he offered three strings of a wampum. Whether the Congress actually got those strings or not is a bit irrelevant because that letter got them off their bickering butts and to the table to finalize the design that we now know as the colony flag, which just goes to show that then and even now, a pen and paper can solve more problems than a blade and a firearm. I'm just saying. Though you do have to wonder, what would have happened if Thomas Green never sent that letter? How much longer would they have debated about the flag design? Thankfully, we'll never know. Number seven, Betsy Ross didn't make the flag? I teased this one last entry, but when you think about all the stories of how the American flag came to be in terms of design and who made it, the name Betsy Ross comes to mind. According to the legends, not only did she make the first American flag, which is also known as the Betsy Ross flag to some, but she made flags for various people in America, including the Navy, for over 50 years. She even talked with soon-to-be President George Washington about the design of the flag to try and persuade him to do five-pointed stars instead of six-pointed stars because they were easier to make and cut. But here is the rub. There's actually no documentation or definitive evidence that any of that is true, like at all, meaning that we don't have proof that Betsy Ross made the first American flag that we all know and cherish. To be clear, there's little doubt that she made flags for most of her adult life. That was proven in its own way, including her own job history, 
However, the case of her being mentioned as the one who made the first flag for America came 40 years after her death during the 1870s. And the source who mentioned that, well, let's just say is dubious. So why pick her? Well, her name was known at the time by many people, and again, she was known to make flags for many years. As much as history is made by the victors, history is also made by those who know how to tell good stories, such as George Washington's I Cannot Tell a Lie Cherry Tree Story, among others. And you have to admit, it is a good story. Before we tell you even more good stories about the American flag, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That way, you don't miss our weekly videos. 6. Colors of the Flag As just about any nation will tell you, the design of the flag is very important. But the colors that you choose for your flag are just as important. And the American flag is no different. Now, quite ironically, the American flag shares the same color scheme as England, among other countries, of course. So you might think that the color scheme was meant as a reference to England, but in a better formation almost like a slight on their origins, which might have been a subconscious reason for doing so, but the real logic is much more American. And no, despite what people say, the red and white on the flag does not represent the blood of the people and the color of their skin, though it's easy to see why some would believe that. Rather, it's meant to establish certain virtues and beliefs that the country tried to hold dear. Red is for valor, the ability to show great courage in the face of danger which of course stood for the courage needed to secede from England and make their own country, as well as to fight them in the field of combat despite the overwhelming odds. White stands for purity, which of course can be taken many different ways, but in this case likely means how America was meant to be purely about the people and not just about a singular ruler. Even as a president, the role of who filled that was determined by the people, thus a purity in purpose and in role. Blue was to symbolize loyalty as well as justice. The loyalty that the 13 colonies had when they decided to stand against injustice that England was doling out against them and to fight for what was right and not just do as they were told. It may just seem like colors to those who look upon them, but to the ones who made the flag, they meant so much more. Number 5. The original Star-Spangled Banner still exists. Francis Scott Key is a man who may have had a terrible night back in 1812. But what he saw that night was forever immortalized via his song, The Star-Spangled Banner. What many don't know is that the flag that he saw that night is actually still around. In fact, it's at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. In case you don't know, the flag in question was flown at Fort McHenry in 1812. But he himself was not at the fort, per se, when the battle he witnessed took place. Instead, he was on his ship under close guard of British forces. You see, he had gone to the British to try and release a friend of his who had been arrested by them. While he was able to do so, he had unintentionally learned of the British plan to bombard the fort, which would later be known as the Battle of Baltimore. He would write down later on the sights and sounds of the British attack and how despite all the fire and fury, the fort and the flag still stood, especially the night after the fight, showing that America had prevailed. Also, the song wasn't a song at first, it was more of a story or a poem, and it wasn't called the Star Spangled Banner until years later. Now though, that flag and that song are tied to the American flag completely, including being sang at multiple sports events all over the nation to celebrate the freedom that continues in the nation. Oh, one more thing, the flag that Francis Scott Key saw flying above Fort McHenry, it was the 15-star, 15 15-stripe 15 flag. How ironic is that? 4. How to take care of your flag There's a lot of misconceptions about the American flag, including by real Americans who want to try and preserve the sanctity of it throughout any occasion no matter the circumstance. This includes the belief that if a flag touches the ground unintentionally or gets dirty in any matter, shape, or form, it's to be destroyed, usually by burning. You know, Viking funeral style or something of the like. Don't believe the hype it's not a true thing. Rather, the only time you're to burn an American flag, in a respectful way of course, is when the flag itself cannot be repaired, such as when it's been torn to shreds via a storm or something happens to it so that it can't be shown in its true glory. Then it can be destroyed in a dignified manner like burning. However, 
If you are a flag owner and you accidentally drop it on the ground or you go and accidentally stain it with something, you don't have to burn it. You can just go and wash it to get the stain out. You can even dry clean your flag if you want. So the next time you drop your flag, don't overreact. It's fine. Number three, when to raise or use a flag. Just like there are rules to maintain your flag, there are also schedules that are to be maintained when displaying your flag out in public. Obviously, you're not going to be arrested for not adhering to these rules, but it is an interesting thing to see, especially since technically it's a federal law. Didn't see that coming, did you? So what are the rules? One, the flag should be displayed between sunrise and sunset. Two, the flag may be taken down and protected if the weather is too fierce, like heavy rains, wind, snow, etc. Three, you are allowed to display your flag 24 hours a day, but you must make sure it's illuminated. Seems kind of particular, huh? Like I said, you're not going to get in trouble if you don't adhere to these exactly, but you can't blame a nation for trying to make sure their flags are displayed properly and in the correct manner. 2. Old Glory As we've already noted on this list, there are many nicknames for the American flag, including the Star Spangled Banner. But another nickname that is synonymous with the flag is Old Glory. But do you know where that nickname came from? It actually came from a captain named William Driver back in 1831. Before sailing off on one venture, his mother and other women from his hometown gave him the flag to put on the mast of his ship. Upon seeing it flap in the wind, he gave it the nickname Old Glory, and after he went back home to Salem, he continued to show the flag off and continued to call it that nickname. Eventually, it caught on, and thus it became another famous nickname to the American flag. Number 1. There are five American flags on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Those immortal words helped seal the future of mankind as a whole because it provided that we had done what many thought was impossible, land on the moon. And not surprisingly, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon, they made sure to plant an American flag to honor the country that sent them on that legendary journey. In the years that followed, five more flags were planted on the moon, making six total. However, one of those flags is no longer upright on the moon. Want to guess which one? If you guessed the first one, you'd be right. Upon takeoff in the lunar module, Buzz Aldrin noticed that the flag that they had planted was blasted away by the rockets, and because of the conditions of the moon, the flag is more than likely dust by now. However, the other five still remain and also remain the only country flags to ever be put on the moon. Thanks for watching everyone. What did you think about these amazing facts about the flag of the United States of America? Did you learn something new about the flag and its origins? Which of these facts were the best in your eyes? Do you know another flag that could be on our list? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.